What is up guys and welcome back to my channel. So today we are gonna look into the new developer update from July 2022. Brand new, so let's get started. so here we have the developer update so let's look at the most important stuff you can read it for yourself as well i will drop the link down in the description so pretty much what they are saying about the progression is that with uh, progressing into the blood web right now you didn't really get as much back right so sometimes you get like common add-ons sometimes rare add-ons but they're going to change that apparently what they're saying if in a future update we will revisit the rarity of blood web nodes after prestiging Currently, resetting to level 1 also makes common quality nodes far more well common. If your favorite add-ons happen to be rare or very rare, prestiging may have made collecting them difficult. This change will make it easier to find a wider variety of add-ons of both lower and higher rarities. So they're going to change this. I have said this for like a while now. This is why a lot of people are not prestiging or doing anything like that because it's not really worth it. Uh, so hopefully this is going to be a good change. Beyond the add-ons, we also received some feedback there saying on the cost of prestiging. So in the P2B, the prestige node costs 50,000 blood points. Right now, they are gonna pretty much change it to 20,000 blood points to make it a little bit easier. The blood points cap was always around a million. If we had like certain codes or when you logged in and you got something extra, it went over the million. But now they are gonna change it to 2 million blood points as a cap. In the P2B, they awarded one bonus prestige level for each prestige your characters had prior to the P2B. Now, for the full mid-chapter release, they realize we have to do a little bit better. We have increased this to two bonus prestige levels. So it's a lot better and not, as what a lot of people are saying, not really worth it. But right now, I think this is pretty good. It's a good change. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Now we're going to go into the gameplay changes. I think these are the most important ones. Endurance. The endurance effect has been a hot topic for discussion since the P2B went live. Historically, the status effect has been used very sparingly, but with the advent of new ways to get the effect, some of you made it your personal mission to chain together as many endurance effects as you could. Which is what I showcased as well. Uh, I will show you guys the video in the description down below, or click around here somewhere in the video. Well, this text is technically working as designed, avoiding multiple hits in a row is not something that we want to see. Pretty much what I showcased in my video as well, you can take up to four hits before you actually go down when you get off the hook with certain perks. As a result, the endurance effect will no longer protect you from going down if you already have the deep wound status effect. This effectively limits the number of hits you can avoid with endurance to one until you mend your wounds. As a note, you may still gain the endurance status effect while you have deep wounds. This is intended. While it won't prevent you from avoiding a hit, it will take effect if you're able to mend your wounds while the effect is still active. So pretty much I have to see how this is going to be in the chapter when it's finally released, the update. It was pretty, pretty bad in my opinion, how it was before in the P2B. So I'm glad they made this change. I think it will be better for a lot of killers, especially new players, because they have no idea what's happening. They also are going to make a couple changes to the perks. The reason of this is that they had a lot of feedback of people not being very happy. And the biggest one, I think, is definitely Spine Chill. They pretty much realize that a lot of people are using Spine Chill in order to play the game. For example, a lot of people have certain disabilities and they were using Spine Chill in order to play the game and i don't think behavior realized how effective and how important spine chill was for those players and i'm very very glad that they listened to the feedback of the community right now it activates when the killer has a clear line of sight to you after revealing this change many voiced their concerns about how this would affect deaf and hard of hearing players who relied on spine chill as a replacement for the terror radius while we don't want uh, accessibility to fall on perks we also do not want to remove this aspect of the perk until we're able to implement a more permanent solution for release, we have added a visual indicator to Spine Chill's icon that displays the terror radius strength. So it's going to be a terror radius thing, which is really good, I think. But this is very important what they're saying. In the future, we would like to revisit this and implement a permanent solution that does not require a perk. I think this is huge. This is very huge. They are acknowledging the fact that they actually have an issue here. They have an issue in the game. And I think it's really, really good that they are acknowledging that it should not rely on a perk on its own, which it is right now. So they are trying to find a different solution and a permanent solution for that problem so that everybody, no matter who you are, can play Dead by Daylight. Dead hard. So pretty much uh, all you need to know about Dead Hard is getting nerfed again. 
Dead Hard now grants the endurance status effect when activated instead of causing you to dash. In the PTB, the duration of the status effect was set to one second. I showcased this. It will be linked in the video as well. This gave survivors a long window to dodge a hit when Dead Hard was used. For the mid-chapters release, we are reducing this to 0.5 seconds, requiring more precise timing to use effectively. Pretty much, they nerfed Dead Hard again. I don't think this perk is going to be used at all anymore. It's it, Even the one second, in my opinion, was such a slow window. It's such a small window. As a killer main myself, and true, I have a lot of hours in Dead by Daylight. I have over 4,000 something hours. However, I could have, I just, I told everybody, even if you only had like 20 hours in a game, and I will tell you, if you just wait one second and then hit again, you will have them down. So the fact that they are putting it down to 0.5 seconds, I don't really know why. I think maybe a lot of people started complaining again. I think Dead Heart is going to be a useless perk and nobody's going to use it. Honestly, I'm a little bit nostalgic about it. I'm going to miss it sometimes. But yeah, I don't know. It was such a big thing in the game and it's absolutely gone right now. Balance aside, we've also seen some feedback on Dead Hard's animation. You can see it right now. The animation was still the same. So they didn't change anything about that at all. And it looked so weird because it had the same old animation, but it didn't do the same thing. So a lot of people were very confused and it just looked very, very strange. Uh, they are replacing now the Dead Hearts animation as well. I'm excited to see what it's going to be. Is it going to be worth it? Uh, probably not, because I'm probably not going to use this perk anymore. There's a lot more perks in the game now that are far better than Dead Hard. And I'm sorry, Dead Hard gamers. Rest in peace. All right, off the record, now grants endurance in addition to its existing effects. Uh, some of you pointed out that like the size of strike off the record could give survivors a guaranteed escape once the gates are powered. As a result, this perk will deactivate and remove its effects once the gates are powered. So what I said as well off the record was going to be the new meta combined with other perks. Uh, they realized this as well and they are actually trying to balance it out a little bit better. So pretty much what you could have done is use DS and then still use off the record and get a hit and get out. As mentioned earlier in the post, the endurance effect will also no longer protect you from damage if you already have the deep wound status effect, making it very impractical to dodge subsequent hits. As with all the endurance effects, the effect is cancelled prematurely if you perform a conspicuous action. So pretty much if you touch a totem, gen, something like that, you're doneers. Overcharge. We also showcased this, how effective overcharge was uh, combined with other perks. On the P2B, this was set to grow from 100% to 400% speed over the course of 30 seconds. This was a little bit extreme. They are also acknowledging it, guys, that what they were doing was just not right. And everybody was so confused about it. We're like, if this is going to hit live servers, this is going to be terrible. They realized their mistakes and they are changing it right now. The generator will start regressing at 75% speed and increase to 200% speed over the course of 30 seconds. So it's going to be def different for sure. If you're curious, it says overcharge becomes faster than the vault regression after only 12 seconds so it is still really good i think it's a good change but how it was before it's it was terrible um pretty good but terrible and i think right now this is a good change but we have to see how it's going to work out in the end botany knowledge increases your healing speed far more than before but no longer provides med kit efficiency i thought uh, botany knowledge was very very strong i showcased that as well as you can see here and they are saying right now, well, this change made it perk more appealing to the healers out there. It could be a little too powerful with medkits. It was very powerful. It was so fast. The healing went so fast. And together with a boon, it was even faster as well. It was just crazy. Okay, I thought like, why are you even making this change? It doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, now they are trying to change it in the sense that botany knowledge will receive a 20% efficiency penalty to medkits. So they are doing something about it. Uh, while this may sound minor, even a slight reduction to efficiency can cause medkits to run out of charges before you can finish your heal. I think this is a good change. I have to see how it works, of course, when it goes live. But yeah, how it was before, it was a bit too strong in my opinion. Because they always wanted to nerf certain things and they actually made things stronger as well. But combined with everything else, it was just so powerful that I just did not understand of why they would change it in the first place. But luckily... They understood, they listened to our feedback, and I think that's very important. Distortion. Prevents your aura from being revealed to the killer and now be, can be recharged by staying inside their terror radius, which is huge. So, as a small quality of life improvement, Distortion will now have an audio cue when a token is used. This will make the effects harder to miss. Pretty good. I think it's pretty good. Again, nothing major, but they listened. Iron Will. Now reduces your grunts of pain by 75% rather than making you silent completely, as I showcased as well. And no longer works while exhausted. 
which was pretty terrible for a lot of people this was terrible combined with fearmonger a lot of people are going to use this i think we have to see but let's see what they done with it we have seen some feedback concerning the volume of certain survivors compared to others for example what i said as well ace is much much less loud than for example jane with the grunts of pain that's why a lot of people are using ace uh, without iron will because he's much much more quieter than the rest of the survivors in a future update we'll be reviewing the volume levels of each survivor's grunts to ensure that each of them can make use of this perk inner focus was unchanged on the p2b but it will be receiving a small tweak in time for the release Ooh. Currently, Inner Focus allows you to see the scratch marks of other survivors within 32 meters. We're removing the range requirement entirely, letting those with a keen eye spot distance scratch marks too. That's pretty. That that's a lot. That is pretty huge, actually. It kind of feels like Bond. Uh, with Bond, you can see uh, them as well from pretty far. Now you can see them with scratch marks. I think that's pretty huge. I think it's going to be fun to use uh, with different perks. I'm interested. I'm definitely going to use it. It sounds fun to me. All right, now we're going into the visual changes. The perk charms, we talked about it very briefly. Uh, the charms will have a purple background like the actual tier three perk and feature a golden border. All right, uh, character portrait effect. For me, this was kind of huge. Uh, as you guys know, I've had, I have a lot of hours in DVD. I prestige most of my characters and I literally got uh, the portrait, I saw the portrait, as you can see right here, because we showcased it. It was like a weird yellow glowy effect. It kind of reminded me of a Snapchat filter uh, that we used before, like a TikTok filter. I don't know. I didn't really like it. I didn't think it was very DVD-ish. And to this day, I am still very upset that they are not giving us anything extra. They are replacing the effect entirely with animated scratch marks. Uh, the effect will appear between the character and the background rather than on top of the character. As with on the P2B, you can disable this effect in options menu if desired. Okay. Uh, prestige icons. This is going to be interesting. They did change the icon completely, apparently. Uh, they have made slight improvements following the P2B and added gold trim to all prestige icons, giving even the lowest prestige some well-deserved flair as well. Still, to this day though, guys, I feel a little bit... Meh about the entire change of that you put so many hours like me for example there's people out there that have more hours that prestige every single character put so much blood points into them put so much effort and even years into certain characters that i don't think it is 100 uh what we should get back as the loyal player base i am excited to see if they are still going to change that if they're still going to give something back because if you guys can still remember back in the day in 2016 we had for example the legendary skins yeah, I don't know. I just I just expected a little bit more. Let me know your thoughts, guys, about the entire changes. Let me know in the comments below, and I see you in the next one. Bye.